Hello, I'm Anthony Barone, Senior Engineer with the Virtual Systems Group in Amazon Robotics. And this talk is about how we bring complex systems to life with simulation. In this talk, I'll describe why we use simulation at Amazon, how teams are using simulation today, how we are scaling up what can be simulated, and what's coming up next in our roadmap. So let's get started with an example demonstrating why we use simulation. Let's pretend I'm an engineer at Amazon who owns a process that uses a conveyor system to help fulfill orders. I've seen robot arms in use in other parts of the warehouse, and an idea is starting to brew up. Let's use robot arms with my conveyor. So I really think that this idea can help delight our customers by getting their orders to them quicker. But in order for my leadership to make a decision to invest in this project, I'll have to use some data to convince them rather than relying on gut instinct alone. That means I'll have to do some experimentation. There are two forms of experimentation that we will consider, and both have their time and place to be used. For physical experimentation, we will need to find some space in a warehouse to set up a portion of the actual equipment. This can be a very good representation of the final system, but is very expensive and iteration is slow. We can only run one experiment at a time, and sometimes this is not practical at all if we need to experiment with hundreds or thousands of robots or devices. For initial experimentation, we like to start virtually with simulation. Simulation is inexpensive and quick to set up and iterate on. We can potentially run thousands of experiments in parallel. The downsides are that by its nature, we need to make abstractions and assumptions, which means that we may miss some issues that would get picked up in a physical experiment. It's generally a good idea to supplement simulation with physical experiments at some point. Given that background, here's a video with an overview of some of the simulations that my team has been involved with. Simulation is used throughout Amazon, so this is just a sample of what is out there. In the first few segments, you'll see mobile robot drive units, which have become very common across the Amazon fulfillment network. There are also simulations of robot arms, associates performing tasks, conveyance, gantries, and autonomous drive units. These simulations are used to demonstrate viability of a concept, similarly to our opening example, iterate on design, and to qualify changes being released to production. The final clips show an attempt to approach photorealism and sim visualization using NVIDIA's Omniverse technology. Some examples of specific simulators include a structured fulfillment center floor, which may contain over a thousand robot drive units, in this environment, the robots are fairly simple and can all exist in a single simulation. A high fidelity robotic arm simulation with realistic physics, communicating with real work cell control logic, and a high fidelity autonomous drive unit with multiple sensors performing real perception and planning. A commonality between all three simulators is that they weren't designed to work together. Different teams built these simulators for different purposes. This is where the Sim Federation comes in. We created the Sim Federation framework to coordinate multiple simulators interacting with each other to model a greater system. This could be multiple of the same simulator, such as many autonomous drives interacting in the same environment, or a mixture of different simulators working together. This helps to get ideas and solutions deployed in shorter timeframes so that customers may more quickly reap the benefits. In this diagram, you see some of the simulators we previously discussed, along with cloud services, which is the business logic that makes the real systems run. I'll now go into more detail on the components of a SIM Federation. The first element of the SIM Federation framework is communication. Communication between actors in a federation is performed using messaging. Messages are encapsulated in a federation envelope. In addition to the message payload, the envelope contains key information about the sender and receiver, as well as the SIM time that the message should be received. The components that will be discussed in the following sections all use this messaging framework under the hood. Simulators manage simulation time differently, and there needs to be a way to keep them all in sync. Some simulators and federation actors operate in real time, which most people are familiar with. Time progresses continuously based on a processor's clock. Other simulators use a time step methodology in which time is broken up and advances in uniform steps. The simulator processes one step at a time and updates state for that step prior to progressing to the next step. The final way that time can be managed is with a discrete event framework. In this model, time advances non-uniformly and jumps forward based on the sim time of the earliest event in an event queue. 
The Federation Time Sync service was designed to keep all of the actors in a Federation in sync. It uses knowledge about registered actors to instruct them on how far they can progress with the run until message. In this case, until T2. Each actor will send messages back to the time sync service at some interval, letting it know that they have progressed some amount. Time sync service will periodically extend how long the actors can run for based on registration data, along with time advanced updates from the actors. The next component to help bring together multiple simulators is a shared physical world. We have a number of active actors which are modifying the world in some way, such as moving themselves, changing orientation, picking up a box, and we can have a number of passive actors that are just observing changes to the world. Having a shared physical world ensures that all actors see a coherent view of the world and get timely updates when relevant changes are made. Here we have a shared physical world service along with a number of active actors and observing actors. Active actors, such as physical drive units, inform the physical world when they make changes. The shared physical world periodically sends updates to subscribers such as sensors with subscribed diffs. This is all done in coordination with the time sync service to ensure that actors don't miss out on information. There are multiple customers using the Sim Federation framework, but we have also created a load test to enable us to continually push the limits. Our load test is based on the autonomous drive simulator and we've demonstrated it at 150 drives. Each autonomous drive unit has one navigation actor and 15 sensor actors for a total of 16 actors per drive. This amounts to 55,000 messages per second. The Federation is set up to adhere to real time to ensure that Federation services can keep up. We can run multiple of these 150 drive Federations concurrently, only constrained by what AWS EC2 account limits are set to. We're going to continue to scale upwards, but apart from that, what's coming up next? One of our next steps will be to demonstrate a heterogeneous mix of different simulators working together. This will enable us to simulate larger portions of production systems. Another area under development is a mechanism to easily bring production business logic into a federation. This will enable sim federations to be easily stood up and torn down independently of any integ or alpha service environments, and to decouple how many federations can be run concurrently from how scaled a service is in Integra Alpha. That's it for this presentation. Thank you so much for watching.